consultation which was carried out last year. And in addition to that, an economic impact report, uh, traffic modelling and air quality report. So it, it's it's a long uh, series of, of papers uh, for which I apologise. But essentially, what we're being asked to do today is to approve the final business case for and to proceed to implement implementation of three travel gateway schemes in Harrogate, Selby and Skipton. Uh, now, these are the result of a successful bid that we made to the government's Transforming Cities Fund through the Leeds City region. And it's valued, the total value of these uh, schemes is £42 million, which will bring, if approved by us today, uh, the greatest investment into three of our town centres for decades. And represents, as the port, uh, report before us today makes clear, a once in a generation transformation of travel gateways in Harrogate, in Selby and in Skipton. Chairman, uh, I'd like to take this early opportunity to uh, thank, uh, before we take a decision on it, however, to thank the County Council's Transforming Cities Fund team, members of Business and Environmental Services uh, Directorate, our legal officers, and everyone else for the hard work and the professional advice which have brought us to where we are today. I also pay tribute to members and officers of the West Yorkshire Combined Authority, who hosted me for several meetings during this bidding process, uh, for their leadership and their support during what has been a very long and complex journey to take us to this point. And uh, by no means least, uh, to the members and officers of Harrogate Borough and Craven and Selby District Councils, who provided us with invaluable partnership support as the three gateway schemes have been developed. And I should add for colleagues that I had a call just before this meeting started this morning from the leader of Harrogate Borough Council, uh, Councillor Richard Cooper, who uh, wanted to assure me and you uh, that he and his uh, council, Harrogate Borough Council, are totally behind the Harrogate Gateway scheme. Now, as always, uh, there have been opponents and objectors to our proposals, not least in Harrogate, uh, where some town centre businesses have consistently called for our plans to be shelved. And I think it is useful for uh, cabinet colleagues, uh, executive colleagues today to know that uh, two of the people who are presenting a statement to us today also brought to the Harrogate and Nesborough Area Constituency Committee on the 6th of January a petition of some 700 signatures asking members of the Area Constituency Committee to call upon the County Council to cancel the Gateway Scheme for Harrogate altogether. Now, I should add that this was debated by members of the Area Constituency Committee and I'm pleased to say that there was unanimous cross-party support that we do not listen to the demands of the petition and that this uh, this scheme, along with the ones for, for Skipton and Selby, go ahead. There is also a small group of local residents close to the scheme who felt that uh, the measures were taking on the highways on Station Parade on the A61 southbound would have an effect on uh, congestion in their residential streets. Uh, but the professional advice I've been given, and my personal view is, that uh, those fears are, are, are not at all realistic. So while I welcome the determined participation in the process of, of the various groups who are opponents of the Harrogate scheme, uh, I have to say that none of them appear to be offering any realistic alternative measures to combat congestion, which in Harrogate is the worst of any urban centre in our county. Now, the gateway proposals before us today do accord with the criteria of the government's fund, namely to improve connections between town centres and suburbs, to support public transport, in this case, rail and bus, to encourage sustainable modes of transport, in this case, walking and cycling, and to drive up productivity and the local economic situation. 
Now, in the case of Harrogate, uh, I am asked often, what is the County Council's mandate for introducing this scheme? And I will always refer those people to the Harrogate Congestion Study Public Engagement, which took place in 2019, which attracted a record number of responses. 15,500 residents of Harrogate decided to respond to that consultation. And they gave a very clear message to us. Namely, in order to combat congestion, they did not want new highways, but they wanted better measures for walking and for cycling. They wanted us to boost public transport and they wanted to encourage people, especially for short journeys, to get out of their cars, to get on their bikes, to get on their feet or to take public transport. And it is my belief, colleagues, that the gateway schemes before us today do exactly that. So, Chairman, without further ado, I'd like now to hand over to the uh, BES director, Carl Battersby, to take us through the report. OK, thank you, Don. Carl, please, can I come to you? Thank you, Leader. Um, Don, I think, gave a very good um, summary there, but just to maybe a bit of additional context before I get into the detail of the report. So, um, nationally, um, <clears throat> there is a changing picture. So, the government have introduced the um, decarbonisation strategy, net zero strategy. We've had COP26, and even yesterday there was an announcement around changes to the highway code, um, which are about being more sensitive to people who are cycling or walking on our streets and I think the schemes need to be seen partly in that context and indeed locally. Um, the executive have signed off our, our bus service improvement plan. Um, we're supporting a bid for uh, net zero buses in the Harrogate area on a very popular route, Route 26. And we've got numerous active travel schemes as well, a number of which in Harrogate, all together trying to reduce the dominance of the car, improve accessibility, improve the environment. So these schemes are very much in line with that. And the report covers all three. And I, I wouldn't want the, the Harrogate um, scheme because it has had the most response and, and contention to overshadow what is very significant investment in Selby and Skipton as well. Indeed, Selby is the biggest investment um, of the three. And all schemes share, share a couple of things. I think one is that not only do they seek to um, improve um, the environment and, and make walking and cycling and connectivity better, but they also um, result in significant investment in an improved public realm in each of these three places as well, um, which I think is is, is very important. And uh, we know from um, numerous studies that actually investment in high quality public realm um, is really important in terms of the economic um, fortunes of places and town centres um, are changing the way that um, <coughs> retail activity operates now, the reasons that people go into centres have changed. Um, pre-pandemic and the pandemic has, has accelerated some of those changes as well. So it's important that, that we move um, with the times and make sure our places are, are flexible and able to respond to what, what the future will, will bring. So I think overall a very positive report in terms of level investment. And I think as Councillor McKenzie has said, it's a once in a generation opportunity um, to, to make this investment in these places. So um, I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail today. I'm sure members will be relieved. And as, as um, Councillor McKenzie has said, there is a, a lot of information in the appendices, um, much of which is, is covered in the report. So if I start with Harrogate, the key elements of the scheme set out in paragraph 5.1, and I think the two main areas that have that have caused, I think, most response um, are around the reallocation of the road space on station parade and the northern end being made one way southbound and the partial pedestrianisation at certain times of the eastern end of James Street um, and what that what that would mean. And I think flowing from those issues, concerns around um, um, the, the economic impact of that, um, what that means for, for members of the public and public safety um, and um, traffic congestion and what that means as well. So the report covers off um, each of those areas um, in detail. So if I can come to the first one around the, the economic and business impact. So there is an economic case report, um, Appendix C, um, which I think sets the context of nationally what's happening, but also uses some relevant examples of where these schemes have, have been implemented and some interesting economic data in there regarding um, 
uh, number of, of high street businesses and and how the, the town centre is generally operating. I think it's a very positive picture in terms of the economic um, impact that this scheme um, could have on the town. So I think on the basis of the work that's being carried out, we're, we're confident that actually there will be a positive uh, economic and business impact as a result of these investment and the changes proposed. In terms of congestion, traffic flow and air quality, um, a number of concerns here. Um, one in relation to um, congestion um, in terms of the routes through the town. Um, we've carried out traffic modelling. We've actually used very much a worst case scenario, which shows that at peak uh, afternoon times, a 53 second delay in terms of traffic moving through the town. Important to point out that um, uh, a significant amount of that traffic is through traffic rather than traffic that has an origin and destination in the centre of Harrogate. And we've used 2018 um, traffic data as well. So pre pandemic, but actually um, a higher um, traffic count than in 2019 as well. So um, and we've not taken any account of changing traffic patterns, people tra choosing to travel in a different way. So we've very much tried to use the worst case scenario in assessing that traffic impact. We've also set the traffic impact of, of local changes within the town um, and, and concern has been raised by local communities regarding Chortland Mount, Mount Parade, Granville Road, East Parade and various other roads within the town. Um, and the work that we've done in the traffic modelling, I think we were content that whilst there will be some um, local increases, that those are, aren't significant enough um, to be an issue in terms of the scheme. We've also looked at air quality as we are legally required to do. Um, and clearly there would be some impacts in terms of the scheme being implemented, but post implementation, um, those are considered not not of significance. And again, doesn't really take account of the way that the town will, will change going forward. And that report is included in as an appendices um, as well. Also concerns raised in Harrogate around um, attractiveness, accessibility and safety. Um, I think our, our view was that um, we don't think that the safety of the public will be impacted by um, the pedestrianisation of James Street. Some concerns raised by the civic society that, that that will make the fact that there will be less vehicle traffic will make people feel less safe. I, I'm not sure I concur with that view and actually I don't think that is borne out in other places where um, um, the, the penetration of the car into the centre has been reduced. Actually what you've seen is that people feel more safe because um, of that environment and, and I don't think that, that is a, a key issue for us and in terms of um, attractiveness um, the scheme is not finally designed as yet we've tried to show um, a palette of materials um, and tried to actually stick with a really high quality um, within certainly a, a, a palette that um, that would that would fit in well within the center there is still further detailed design work to be done um, on that um, but we are trying to effectively raise the bar uh, and provide uh, enhanced quality particularly um, in areas um, like outside the station where we're, we're looking to to have um, that space used for um, greater events and again to try and support that that changing nature of the town sense offer uh, and vibrancy um, so in terms of Harrogate um, we our conclusion is that um, the scheme supports the objectives that we set out for and those are set out in paragraph 5.24. Um, we are very sensitive um, to the disruption that this could potentially cause if the scheme is implemented and we would want to produce for all three schemes a construction management plan and we'd want to share that with local people and businesses, seek feedback so we can plan any works to try and minimise um, any disruption because clearly um, we don't want uh, any further impact on either residents or businesses where we can help it. So that would be something we'd want to do going forward for all three schemes. If I can turn to Selby, um, uh, the, the, the response to the consultation on Selby, I um, think overwhelmingly positive, um, set out in paragraph 6.2 of the report. Um, the three elements of the scheme here are uh, the Usegate Active Travel Corridor, uh, Bus Hub and the Western Link, 
um, the railway station gateway and the creation of an eastern station entrance. Um, we have made some alterations as the scheme has gone through, um, particularly in relation to the removal of the bridge to Olympia Park. That was in response, in response to feedback, but also um, cost and time scale in terms of delivery um, for TCF. And uh, the further consultation, um, again, has been, been very positive on the back of all that. I would also point out that um, significant investment by the district council in terms of the Selby scheme um, and some land acquisition that's already been agreed on the back of the proposed scheme. Um, really positive scheme for Selby and, and really well received. So I think that's that's a less contentious scheme, obviously in the Harrogate one and, and recommending that we, we move forward with that as well. And lastly, Skipton key elements of the Skipton scheme. So reconfiguration of the railway station car park, Broughton Road, Road corridor where we were looking to to change the nature of that road and introduce a 20 mile an hour speed limit as part of those changes. Um, railway station to bus station pedestrian improvements uh, and railway station to college campus pedestrian improvements as well. Again, very positive response to the consultation that we've had there. Um, and one change we have made in Skipton was in relation to the provision of cycle lanes and we've consulted on the back of that change as well and also had some very good feedback in terms of the replacement of the Gallows Bridge and, and some design options about what that could look like going okay. forward. But again, very positive uh, final consultation response to that scheme. So if members are supportive today uh, of these three business cases, the next stage would be to complete and finalise the detailed designs, submit the vinyl business case through to the combined authority for their consideration um, and then uh, ultimately um, we will be into a contractual arrangement to deliver the schemes. The time scale for delivery um, set out um, in A8.3 in terms of the submission of the business cases um, and the, the overall Transforming Cities programme has a deadline of March 23 but um, the Department for Transport have confirmed there is some flexibility uh, on that delivery time scale as well, which will be very helpful because these are large and complex schemes. And we've had some early involvement with the delivery contractor so that they can um, quickly get up to speed in terms of taking the schemes forward. The recommendations in the report um, essentially are that um, uh, executive, if they support the scheme, delegate authority for me in consultation with cabinet member to sign off the final detailed business case before submission to the combined authority. And the last thing I would mention here is just in terms of um, um, legal uh, issues going forward. So. Um, there are a number of traffic regulation orders that will be required to implement these schemes, particularly in Harrogate in relation to James Street and Station Parade, and those would obviously follow statutory process and be subject to statutory consultation as set out in um, paragraph 11 of the report. So thank you, Chair. I'm happy to take any questions. OK, thank you, Carl. We'll come to discussion and questions shortly. And thank you, Don, for the introduction. We have uh, public questions and statements now. Um, I believe we have two people present who want to make their statement to us. So I'll take those first and then I'll ask for a uh, an officer response to each of those in turn. And then we have three others, I believe. And I'm going to ask an officer to read those three out together and then ask uh, Barry Mason to give a, in effect, a composite answer uh, to the three. So, uh, my understanding is that we have David Simister, who is the Chief Executive of the Harrogate District Chamber of Commerce, and he's going to uh, present something on behalf of the BID, the Chamber of Commerce and the Independent Harrogate Traders Association. Um, and then we have Susan Amaku, who's representing the Harrogate Civic Society. So can I come please to David Simister first? David, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, good afternoon, um, councillors. Today, you are being asked to approve the spending of more than £10 million of taxpayers' money on the Harrogate Station Gateway project, aimed at improving active transport within the town centre, in particular cycling and walking. Last year, we separately, i.e. Harrogate Chamber, Harrogate Bid and Independent Harrogate, responded to the initial survey, giving well-reasoned suggestions and alternatives to some of what was being proposed. Later in the year, we conducted a joint survey. Of those who responded, the vast majority were against the two key elements of the project, 
the narrowing of the A61 from two lanes to one, and the pedestrianisation of James Street. Last November, Harrogate District Chamber of Commerce held a well-attended meeting dedicated to the project, and it was clear from the questions asked and a vote at the end of the meeting that the majority were against the project. As individual organisations, we again responded to the second round of consultation, sadly all to no avail. The views of the business community have been continually ignored, as have those of other key organisations, in particular Harrogate Civic Society, residents' organisations and individuals, who believe what is being proposed will not bring the benefits being espoused. The Conservative Party, of which you are a member, prided itself on being the party of business. Sadly, this doesn't appear to be the case anymore. An economic impact survey has not been undertaken, yet we have been told that the project will be good for business. We are told the project will encourage those who live close to the town centre to leave the car at home and travelling by bus, bicycle or on foot. By doing so, they will stay longer and spend more money. What it fails to do is take into account those tens of thousands of visitors who live outside the district and choose to come here to stay in our hotels and guest houses and spend their money in our shops, restaurants, bars and entertainment venues. Harrogate is also used as a base to visit other areas within the county. And again, these visitors patronise local businesses. And how many of those visitors travel here by bus, train, bicycle or on foot? And what of those who live in Harrogate's outlying villages where there isn't a regular bus service? Has any consideration been given to them? And as for those businesses that can't endure any more disruption, what of them also? With ongoing pressure from the internet and out-of-town shopping centres with ample free parking, what we want is a town that is accessible to all. For the last two years, town centre businesses have suffered at the hands of the COVID pandemic. And now you are proposing to add at least another 12 months of major disruption and misery. For you, it will be easy to support the proposals in front of you. As of next year, North Yorkshire County Council will not exist in its current form. And some of you may not even seek re-election. Before you cast your vote, we urge you to carefully consider the businesses in Harrogate Town Centre and their collective views. Unlike you, they will have to live with the consequences of your decision for many years to come. And we ask you to vote against implementing the Harrogate Station Gateway project until the economic evidence to support the project has been detailed. And that's on behalf of myself, Sarah Ferguson, Chair of Harrogate Bid, and Robert Ogden, co-founder of Independent Harrogate. And as you're well aware, this letter was sent to you over a week ago. OK, thank you, David. Can I now come to Barry Mason, please, to give us a response? Uh, thank you, Chair, and thank you, Mr. Sim thank you to Mr. Sim Simister for his comments on behalf of the Chamber, the Bid, and Independent Harrogate. Um, there are a number of points raised in the uh, in the the question that I will attempt to address in turn. First of all, with regards to the comments about the economic case, which which has been in development since the outline business case stage of the bid that was made for funding. As members will appreciate, this is an ongoing iterative process and officers have been reluctant to make a final economic case whilst the designs were evolving and the decision had yet to be made. At the TCF consultation meeting that the Harrogate Chamber of Trade organised on the 8th of November 2021, officers outlined the foundation for the economic case utilising widely available data and insight, including documents such as the pedestrian pound, the business case for better streets. That being so, we delayed publishing a final economic case until after the consultation had been completed and any amendments could be taken into account. The economic case document was finalised on the 6th of December 2021 for consideration by senior officers and subsequently to a for informed decision making at this meeting on the 25th of January. During the consultation process, we provided information on the emerging economic case based on the scheme at that point in time. And indeed, at the public drop in sessions, information on the economic case was on public display, which officers talked through with many members of the public. In addition, on the 30th of September 2021, prior to the consultation being launched, officers from both Harrogate and North Yorkshire County Council attended a meeting with the leadership of the Chamber, the BID and Independent Harrogate, at which questions regarding the economic case were discussed. 
In the document, Cheltenham, a spa town with a similar population to Harrogate, is cited as is in Altrincham, um, a similar sized town in the northwest in similar proximity to a major city. Uh, and that's in response to uh, comments regarding um, the, the, the relevance of case studies within the economic case. The comments relating to the impact of the scheme on residents from surrounding villages um, when looking at this, it is important to note that access to the town centre by car will remain. Uh, the scheme is about offering a better balance so that all road users have safer infrastructure to utilise. Um, bearing that in mind, um, the combined parking facilities provided by the Borough Council and the County Council will still be in the region of 6,700 spaces in which people can park their vehicles in and around the town centre. Many of these free of charge and with some of the car parks charging as low as 50p an hour. It is worth noting that the proposals would see a reduction in town centre car parking of approximately 0.6% and that the Victoria multi-storey car park, which is adjacent to the scheme, is often at only 50% capacity and is set to benefit from enhanced pedestrian access to the rest of the town as a result of the TCF proposals. Um, in terms of the project timescales and the impacts, clearly this is an important, important area and the current project plan has a completion date of September 2023 with an approximate build out date of 12 months. The predicted construction time scale has not changed. Um, should members decide to proceed with the project, we would look to work very closely with the contractors, as Carl has mentioned, on the construction management plans to minimise the disruption within the town centre and work closely with stakeholders on the scheduling of construction. Um, as is also mentioned in the um, in 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 the economic case, um, the changing nature of town centres. Um, makes reference uh, to the changing role of town centres and the changing nature of consumer behaviour, um, particular reference being paid to COVID and online shopping adoption, which has been accelerated. The scheme is seeking to address this by enabling the town centre to diversify, be, be more vibrant and to therefore increase footfall. Notwithstanding the reasons for the timing of the economic case being finalised that are outlined already in, in, in my comments, had the case been produced any earlier, as is suggested, the impacts of COVID um, in 2021 particularly would not have been known. OK, thank you, Barry. Can I now move on then, please, to Susan Amaku from the Harrogate Civic Society, please. Chair, um, I don't want to be appearing um, falsely. It may be obvious that I am not Susan Amaku, um, who is un unavailable at the moment, and therefore she has asked me to represent the Harrogate Civic Society in her place. OK, that, 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 that's fine, Mr Brown, you carry on. Um, first of all, thank you for the opportunity um, to speak to the committee. Um, which for us is particularly important because our consultation response does not appear to have been included in the outcome report. And we are also subsequently become concerned that the economic case has only just been published and no time is being given for it to be properly considered. Just some brief background, the Harrogate Cigarette Society has been established for over 50 years and we have approximately 300 members. The consultation response was prepared following discussions and comments raised at an open meeting of the society that was attended by approximately 25 members. I will now highlight the key elements of our consultation, which I believe you have in front of you in more detail. Our major concerns are that in the absence of wider strategic thinking to address traffic flows in Harrogate, including the possibility of reintroducing two-way traffic along Park, West Park and Parliament Street and the potential for park and ride. The proposal may result in traffic congestion throughout the town centre. In our view, the proposal does not adequately consider the needs and safeties of pedestrians, particularly the elderly, the disabled and young families. And we are concerned that traffic safety issues may arise with potential conflicts and confusion over the flow of pedestrians, cyclists and vehicles, 
particularly at some of the junctions. In design terms, we are concerned that there should be a consistent approach to the street furniture to reflect the existing character of the conservation area. And that does not appear to be the current intention. The proposed design of Station Square is, in our view, poor and does not reflect the distinctive character of Harrogate. This is a relatively small and windy space, so water jets are not appropriate. The design might instead take its inspiration from the mid 20th century layout of the space. We consider it is important that vehicular traffic be allowed along James Street, at least in the evenings, to prevent the feelings of anxiety that pedestrians already experience in the evenings in the fully pedestrian spaces of the town. We also have a concern that the footways immediately adjacent to the Everyman Theatre would be reduced in width, which will be to the detriment of pedestrians. We have made other more specific points, but those are already before you. Therefore, Chair, I thank you for the opportunity to express our concerns. And we earnestly hope that the committee will consider cancelling the Harrogate element of this proposal. Thank you. OK, thank you, Mr Brown. Barry, can I come back to you then, please, uh, for a response? Uh, thank, thank you, Chair, and um, thank you to Mr Brown for, for those comments on behalf of the Civic Society. And I'd first of all like to start with an apology um, that the response from the Civic Society was not included in the consultation outcome report. Unfortunately, this was due to an oversight and we will ensure that the published version is amended accordingly. The responses um, that were provided in the um, in, in two, two, two members as part of the, the, the written response for, for this meeting um, have been provided as an officer response and I'll endeavour to cover those now um, using the same subheadings as Mr Brown. Um, so first of all in terms of uh, the comments made about the major concerns about the, the scheme and um, Parliament Street. Um, Aligned to the TCF objectives, which we've already outlined in um, in the uh, remarks from Carl when presenting the report, the promotion of active and, active and public transport measures is a key requirement. A proposed two-way traffic scheme for Parliament Street does not form part of the TCF funded project. Um, when reviewing this proposal, it would be necessary to consider the significant extra cost of these works, the need for larger realigning works at all junctions to ensure compliance against design standards, as well as the need for much greater changes to the wider network in support of such a scheme. The potential development of a park and ride scheme, uh, which has been mentioned by the Civic Society as well, is currently being taken forward by the Harrogate Transport Improvement Programme, which members may recall came out of the Harrogate Congestion Study as our further piece of work to take forward things from that study. Um, but a park and ride scheme does not form part of the TCF funded scheme, which is focused around the gateway proposals. Um, as I said, the aim of the TCF scheme is, introduce, is, is to introduce measures within the town that encourage modal shift away from car based travel towards more environmentally friendly modes, such as walking, cycling and public transport. And this is in line with the overwhelming feedback we received to the Harrogate congestion study back in 2019, which has been referred to by Councillor Mackenzie already as well. Uh, as has been mentioned, we've carried out extensive traffic modelling and we've published a summary of that modelling um, as part of the most, consul most recent consultation and also as part of the um, appendices to this report. And this has shown that the proposals um, show that North Streets experience an increase of more than two to three vehicles per minute in terms of um, being significant, with the exception being East Parade in the evening peak. Um, and as has already been mentioned by um, by the corporate director, the modelling um, is based on uh, a very much a worst case scenario and the issues around air quality we have covered as well in the air quality assessment, which has been um, included as Appendix E to the um, to the report. Um, 
the Civic Society have raised concerns about safety um, in terms of pedestrian safety and also GM Street. I'll first of all deal with pedestrian safety. Safety is considered throughout the design development process by all parties invo involved in the design. Um, and specifically as well, the project goes through three road safety audit stages as part of the design process, with the stage one audit already being carried out in December 2021. The design goes through all of these stages, identifying any specific areas of concern from a safety perspective by road safety, um, uh, an independent road safety professional. The design team is obliged to respond to each of these issues that have been identified within any of the audits to identify how those points raised will be addressed. In addition, we are also using the Inclusion Mobility Guide to Best Practice as part of the detailed design development and with engagement with the Harrogate District Disability Forum to help support the design development process to ensure safe and um, appropriate means of access. Um, in terms of the detailed, uh, in terms of the safety with relation to James Street, um, the safety concerns of the public are a key issue um, that we take very seriously through the design development process. Um, through all the, all stages of the design. And in support of this, the project team have worked very closely with, with the police. Um, they're designing out crime team to provide appropriate design solutions and no significant concerns have been raised. It is also worth mentioning that the street will be subject to unobstructed CCTV coverage following implementation as well. Um, in terms of the um, in terms of the other comments that have been made in writing by the Civic Society, but weren't included in Mr. Brown's um, verbal remarks, I will cover those as well um, for completeness. Um, so, in terms of the um, the wayfinding and road signage design. Um, that is considered as part of the design development activity as well, where we need to balance the requirement for complying with standards, um, any other um, local authority requirements, particularly relating to uh, promoting a pleasing aesthetic solutions that um, that continue to um, fit with the scheme design, the town and, and in terms of that, what I wanted to mention as well is that we are um, producing a town centre design guide as part of the detailed design work, which will seek to provide an agreed specification for materials and street furniture to ensure consistency across the town moving forward. And that will take into account as well the comments that have been made in the consultation exercise where we sought comments on the um, the makeup of the um, of, of the material palette. Comments were also made by the Civic Society about Cheltenham and Station Parade. Um, in terms of the um, safety comments, I would refer to my earlier remarks about the state the the safety audit process and the, the that junction in terms of the um, junction with Station Parade. The um, assessment has shown no um, current modifications being required, but we'll go through the further stages of road safety audit. Um, there was also a suggestion from the Civic Society that the bi-directional cycle lanes on station parade should be in one direction only. Um, the introduction of bus lanes and cycleways as part of the scheme design is aligned with the Transforming Cities Fund objectives of promoting active and uh, active travel and public transport measures within the town. Um, in terms of the scheme design, to to um, to look at the um, the the cycle with um, the traffic model and information output and the confirmation that North Streets would experience an increase of more than two to three vehicles per minute, except for East Parade. Um, in terms of the uh, residential area around Cheltenham Mount, the proposed scheme design creates a one-way system around Cheltenham Mount in a northbound direction, with the residential streets of Back Granville Road and Granville Road having a westbound one-way system as well to create a singular directional flow of traffic around the Cheltenham Mount and Mount Parade residential areas to promote the use of the strategic network through Harrogate Town Centre as far as though in, as far as possible instead of those residential streets. Um, the um, 
Civic Society had also made comments about the signals design for the, um, the station parade Cheltenham Mount Junction. The signal design is reviewed and developed to provide a compliant design that's effective and as safe as possible. The proposed junction promotes the use of designated crossing points to ensure the safest crossing points are used by pedestrians whilst walking and cycling within the town. These crossing locations have been considered and reviewed throughout the preliminary design stage to ensure they are located in the most effective positions and provide the most convenient and safe crossing locations. Um, as I mentioned earlier about the direction of travel on the cycle lanes, um, Regarding the the the, con the suggestion that um, cycle lanes be in a one-way direction, um, this could create a potential concern of northbound cyclists using a southbound um, cycleway or alternatively footpaths. Um, it's felt that a bi-directional cycleway pro pro provides the um, the best way of um, of providing the cycle facilities, segregating cycle traffic from foot traffic and vehicular traffic. In relation to the comments about Station Square, um, the proposed designs for Station Square have been developed with the history of Harrogate in mind, with the aim of reflecting Harrogate's past in a contemporary way, whilst ensuring flexibility. This design has been developed with the input of several stakeholders, and the design development work must balance the needs of the TCF objectives, the need to comply with modern standards, whilst being sympathetic to the historic nature of the town. The proposals to have a water-based feature in the square have gathered support during the consultation period, and we will look to um, consider all stakeholder views going forward. The scheme aims to open up the space and make, more attract and make it more attractive so that the town centre is more vibrant and increases footfall, as well as providing the benefits of a multi-use space that can be used to support events when desired. Finally, turning to the comments relating to um, the footway outside the Everyman uh, um, Cinema, and also comments made about the east side of about the south of Station Bridge, um, and also the Audion Roundabout. The design developed as part of the proposed scheme for the footway outside of the Everyman Cinema, and the proposed cycleway on the east side of Station Parade to the south of Station Bridge, have been designed in accordance with standards and guidance. The design has been developed to ensure compliance with minimum widths, as well as balancing the desire of promoting additional active transport measures. The <coughs> issue of vehicle doors, which was mentioned in the written comments from the Civic Society being opened, will be looked at further during the uh, further detailed design work. And recognising the unfamiliar nature of the proposed, what is known as a Dutch style roundabout for the Audion roundabout. Detailed cycling review activities are ongoing as part of the design development work to ensure a full and comprehensive understanding of any impacts associated with the proposed design to help um, educate people as to how it would operate. Barry, thank you uh, for that. Uh, we now have three questions or statements by members of the public who are not present. So I'm going to ask if those three can be read out by an officer, please. And then, Barry, I'm going to come to you at the end of the three to ask you to give a, a composite response if you can, because I think we're all conscious, having read them, that they're raising very, very similar issues. So, uh, Melanie, could I ask who's going to uh, to read out uh, the statement of Mr. McTagg, Mr. Adams and Miss Gardner and Miss McEntee, please? Yes, Chair, I'm happy to read those out for you. So um, if we take them in that order, if uh, the submission from Mr McTague of Park Parade Harrogate reads as follows. I am very concerned at certain aspects of this project. One, rerouting traffic from Cheltenham Parade, mainly commercial, to Cheltenham Mount, mainly res residential, should be reconsidered. Furthermore, to direct traffic from Cheltenham Mount onto Mount Parade also needs to be changed. Such moves will increase emissions for residents. It will also make residential streets more dangerous for occupants, which include children and the elderly. Two, I note that the project overall will increase exhaust emissions. Surely this is totally unacceptable. Three, I believe that improvements can be made without reducing traffic on station parade to one lane. For example, East Parade could be a priority cycle route. Four, James Street is one of the best shopping streets in the town. 
surely pedestrianising this is flawed. OK, That's thank you, Melanie. Yeah. Can, can you now go on to uh, Barry Adams' uh, submission, please? Yes, so the, Mr Adams' um, submission reads as follows. I understand the Executive Committee of North Yorkshire County Council will be making a final decision on this project at the meeting today. Despite the Council's rejection of a petition organised by Harrogate Residents Association, there clearly is a sign of growing opposition calling for the Station Gateway project to be halted, com compounding the blur already dealt following the negative outcome of the recent Council-run consultation and survey. This opposition continues to grow weekly in the local media and through talking to other people. Sadly, the Council has a growing history of ignoring the democratic process and not listening to the people of Harrogate those who actually live, work and play in the area to be affected. This has been clearly demonstrated with the Otley Road Cycleway project, for which criticism is still growing, including from that, that from the cycling lobby. Beach Grove LTN project and now the Gateway project. It appears to us the voters who have elected you through a democratic process that you're acting as a dictatorship. The station Gateway project will not improve the visible, the visual appeal or the environment of the town centre. It is purely a highway engineer solution to the problem and one which is focused on cycling in an attempt to reduce car usage. It will be a disaster for the town. What a legacy to leave us. On this basis, and as a member of the executive Commit committee, can you please let me know how you intend to vote on the Station Gateway project at this meeting? If it goes pear-shaped, no doubt there will be repercussions and you will be held accountable to the public. For a start, I'm sure it will inform the people of Harrogate in particular how they should vote at the forthcoming elections for the new authority, despite lifelong party allegiances. No more pocket planning, please. We need a more holistic approach which involves all stakeholders, residents, traders and all interests alike, not just the interest of fractional groups, which includes highways issues. One which is led by qualified professional urban designers. There are plenty of examples around the country which have being highway focused and the outcome is not attractive with a plethora of signs, road markings, curbs and other highway paraphernalia. For such a project to be successful, it requires a properly thought out, imaginative, cohesive and comprehensive plan, which clearly understands the movement of all traffic in and out of Harrogate, as well as through the town. In this respect, a relief road is an essential part of this plan, but one which does not force those who are consulted down a particular route and one which does not have a high risk of being rejected because of sensitive environmental issues. In addition, it would appeal to everyone, including environmental groups, if a much more inclusive solution would be developed, one which does not discriminate against the majority of people who cannot or who do not wish to cycle for one reason or another, caters for all groups, ages, abilities and disabilities, serves all types of users, both social and business, and therefore encourages a much wider sector of the community to leave their cars at home, such as an environmentally friendly electric powered park and ride bus service, along with vastly improved local bus services to all neighbourhoods. One which causes far less disruption to the existing infrastructure, far less destruction of the urban environment, and probably at a sensible cost. OK, thank you, Melanie. And then can we have the final one from the Harrogate Residents Association, please? OK. And this um, submission reads as follows. After the rejection of the Council of our petition against the Harrogate Gateway proposal, we understand the executive will be making a final decision on the Harrogate Gateway proposal at their meeting today. Fighting to represent 1,100 members, 779 who have signed the petition to stop the station gateway scheme in its entirety, and those 900 who signed to have the planters removed from James Street because they did not want it pedestrianising. We would ask each councillor involved to please look long and hard at the objections and the reasoning behind those objections before making a decision. Is this the best possible plan for Harrogate? In spite of the petition's rejection, it is very clear that there is an ongoing and increasing opposition to the Harrogate Station Gateway proposal as people become aware of it. For yes, very many have still no idea of what is being planned for their town. The blanket assumption by both North Yorkshire, North Yorkshire County Council and Harrogate Borough Council is that everyone sees and reads local media outlets, be they in print or online. It is erroneous and we would argue that little was done to reach the majority of people and fully inform them of these far-reaching plans. The first survey being released when businesses were more focused on getting their businesses back off the ground 
after yet another lockdown. It's poor timing too. People are objecting very forcefully as they discover, largely by word of mouth, what is being recommended. What is even more disturbing is that although this enormously significant, hugely consequential decision about Harrogate has yet to be made, some in authority are publicly stating that it will happen and that the views of people and businesses of the town count for nothing. It is more than a little perturbing to be informed one whole week before the actual decision making meeting by the main Harrogate media, i.e. the Harrogate advisor and the stray ferret, that the decision is a fait accompli. What happened to democracy in Harrogate and North Yorkshire? The effects of this scheme, both in disruption and ultimate disaster for Harrogate, its residents and businesses are clear to many, as is the blanket ignoring of, by both councils of the opinions of businesses and residents. Plans already implemented, such as the Beech Grove LTN and those parts of the Otley Road cycleway, have and are proving both disruptive and the cause of much more congestion and complaints. Whilst understanding the government's plans for the reduction in carbon emissions, the reality is that most people will continue to use their cars as bicycles are not a viable option for transporting children, heavy shopping, elderly re relatives or the practicalities of running a business. Reducing the main A road through Harrogate to one lane will have a severe knock-on effect on all of these issues and many believe will create more congestion rather than less. Again, please note the result of the Beach Grove LTN and what this has achieved by way of knock-on congestion to surrounding roads. The station area is looking shabby and run down and thus not very welcoming and we agree it needs investment rejuvenation but the station gateway scheme as it is won't significantly, significantly improve the immediate area around the station enough to warrant the negative impact of this scheme. It will be an ill-used congested area not the thronged sunlit piazza of the visuals provided, more a scurried through route to more attractive and practical parts of the town. We ask that consequences, we ask what consequences there will be if this scheme is implemented and proves to be of huge detriment to our town and its businesses. Will those who vote for it while riding the current environmental wave be held responsible for the anticipated disaster if this scheme goes ahead? After all, the scheme was put together prior to any report surveys were done and were therefore based on modelling. As a member of the Harrogate, sorry, as a member of the Executive Committee, we urge you to give great consideration to the future of Harrogate and will be interested to know your ultimate decision. OK, Melody, thank you very much for uh, reading through those three. Barry, can I now turn to you and ask, can you put uh, together a composite response to uh, to those three? Because a lot of the points were, uh, were very uh, similar. Yes, thank thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I'll, I'll as you've said um, in my previous responses, we covered quite a few of the um, the areas, um, and there are some areas of commonality as well. Um, turning first of all to Mr. McTeague's comments relating to um, the, the the scheme specifically, um, Mr. McTeague does make um, he he raises concerns about the rerouting of traffic from Cheltenham Parade. I just wanted to clarify that the intent of the scheme is not to redirect traffic from Cheltenham Parade, which is the A61, onto Cheltenham Mount. The section of Cheltenham Parade between Cheltenham Mount and Station Parade is to remain unaltered as a one-way system. It is no longer proposed um, to redirect um, this traffic with the designs being changed following our consultation back in spring 2021. Um, this update was presented as part of the October and November public consultation. So there is no plans to redirect traffic from Cheltenham Parade onto Cheltenham Mount. The other comments made by uh, Mr McTague Mr. McTague relating to um, traffic on Cheltenham, uh, on Mount Parade and other residential streets, I feel that I've covered off in the response provided um, provided earlier. Um, also in terms of the um, concerns relating to air quality in terms of my previous uh, response about the air quality assessment and the outcome of the air quality assessment and also the comments made by the corporate director about construction management plans to address any um, issues around air quality associated with the construction itself. Um, in terms of the um, in terms of the points related to um, the 
the, the, the reducing traffic to station parade on one lane and making um, East Parade a priority cycle route. Um, in terms of the uh, in terms of the 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 comments previously already provided that um, it's highlighted the, um, the the wish to see more cycle facilities in the town um, and as part of the earlier design work associated with the project we concluded that East Parade didn't create as effective a link into the main station entrance or the bus station so therefore the proposals don't um, don't impact on East Parade in terms of providing new facilities on East Parade, um, and the focus is on Station Parade as the uh, as the key as the key gateway. Um, the final point made by Mr. McTague about um, James Street, um, just wanted to sort of further um, emphasise in terms of the comments I've already made about the parking um, impact in terms of how um, we, we view that the parking impact is relatively, uh, is very small. Um, there was also a parking survey carried out on James Street in October 2021, and that is referenced in the economic case in Appendix C of the report. And this indicates that over 90% of those people doing business in James Street will be unaffected by the removal of parking. Of the 10% or less that were parking, less than 20% of those were of the opinion that they would take business elsewhere. And the proposals will actually will significantly improve the street scene environment to the, to the benefit of pedestrians and those visiting the shops um, in that uh, area while still maintaining essential access because it is a partial pedestrianisation, not a full pedestrianisation. In terms of the comments from Mr Adams and also from um, Ms Gardner and McIntyre, um, the there is a common theme in terms of criticising the County Council's approach to the consultation. Um, so first of all, what I just wanted to re reiterate was um, the comments that we made previously about the wide ranging public engagement that we carried out back in 2019 in terms of the Harrogate congestion study, where there were over 15 and a half thousand participants in that engagement process. And the overwhelming um, view coming back from that was the need for more measures to encourage walking, cycling and public transport. And I think though that that um, that that covers a, the, the response in terms of uh, in terms of both um, Mr. Adams and Ms. Gardner and and McTree uh, regarding the the consultation exercise itself. In terms of the um, the Transforming Cities Fund, um, what I'd also say is that the Transforming Cities Fund um, builds on that, and um, all consultations that we receive in relation to the design will continue to be reviewed, and any relevant detailed design proposals adjusted. Um, the design team continue to engage with groups representing people with disabilities to ensure that their specific requirements are considered as we continue through the design process. And I've already mentioned previously about the guidance that we're using and the engagement with Harrogate District Disability Forum. Um, I've already um, covered the comments relating to um, the provision of a park and ride scheme and that a park and ride scheme, whilst not included in the TCF, is being looked at as part of the transport improvement program. Um, turning to the more specific comments from Ms Gardner and McCutry, um in terms of the, um, the station gateway scheme, we carried out two further public consultation activities in 2021, um, and they've been aimed at providing the public with detailed visibility of the proposed designs. A full suite of information was made available for both of these public consultation activities and multiple drop in sessions were also arranged for all those who would prefer to discuss the proposed scheme with officers of the council. So not relying just on um, social media <laughs> and those who have access to a computer. The information was discussed and presented in these sessions to ensure those in attendance had as clear an understanding as possible of the designs. And in addition, where requested officers took address details to provide paper copies of the requested information. 
I would also like to mention that additionally specific letters were issued to several stakeholder groups, including residents of the Granville Road area and local businesses in that area to ensure greater awareness and visibility of the consultation activity and the arranged drop in sessions. And when requests for these for information were made, this information was provided in what we believe was a timely manner as soon as the team were able to do so. Okay, that's my answers, uh, Chair. Yeah, okay, thank you uh, for that, Barry. So I'll now come back to the Executive Committee, open it up for discussion. And Patrick, I saw your hand up some time ago, it's gone down now. Did, did, did you want to come in? Uh, sorry, Carl, that was an error. Okay, right, thank you. So, Gareth, please. Yeah, thank you, uh, Leader. I hear a lot about democracy and dictatorships and all the rest of it. I've got to say, as a previous portfolio holder for highways, um, I'm used to them charges uh, against this executive committee in relation to Harrogate from some opponents of various schemes that have been muted over the years. But on this occasion, I absolutely refute them. I listened in intently to the local constituency committee only a week or two ago, and I was very interested to hear the views of those local members. I specifically joined that meeting because, in my view, that charge of us riding roughshod over the wishes of Harrogate residents and local representatives would hold true if indeed we had. For if we cast our minds back to, I think it was last year or the year before, the Harrogate congestion study, there was massive opposition to a new highway relief road bypass, call it what you want, with a desire to see more cycling, more environmental friendly nudges uh, towards uh, transport measures, etc. Well, it seems to me that's what we've offered. And it also seems to me that it would be a very foolish executive to turn their back on the desire and support of those democratically elected local members within that Harrogate Area Constituency Committee and overrule their view, especially when the money's there and the scheme's ready to go. So I do refute and find the comments about democracy somewhat shallow. In my view, uh, this, is, this is a matter of judgment. The judgment of local members of all political parties, I might add, has been supportive. With that in mind, I will defer to their view and happy to support. Okay. Thank you, Gareth. Greg, you're indicating, please. Thank you, Leader. Yes, um, I, I very much agree with Gareth about the um, the impact of uh, of local members on the on this uh, decision. Um, we have local members in in Harrogate who meet as a group, and they seem to support this uh, this program. And I would uh, agree with it. I would agree with them on that. Um, I'm conscious that we tend to be talking about Harrogate because Harrogate's the controversial bit. Um, but my view also, I would say, is that the, the objectors seem to be, uh, the objectors seem to be, sorry, I've got a phone going in the background. The objectors seem to be um, arguing for the status quo. And frankly, the status quo isn't available. There's a lot of houses being built in Harrogate. Harrogate is getting bigger. And if nothing happens, there will be more congestion in Harrogate. And we need more people to walk and cycle to make it possible for people to get into Harrogate by car. People who want to get to Harrogate, into Harrogate by car, need their friends and colleagues to travel by foot and by public transport and by cycle. So I really think that doing nothing is not an option. Thank you, Greg. Michael, you're next, please. Thank you, Carl. Um, mine actually, I think, is a, a question for Barry, just in terms of one specific part of the um, concerns and, and opposition that have been raised, not just today, but over recent weeks and months. 
fundamentally, the, the challenge is going to be, <clears throat> if implemented, and the reduction to one lane on station parade, it's about what the impact is on Cheltenham parade right down to its junction with Kings Road and then the junction of the A61 and, and Kings Road. So whilst, whilst that stretch isn't specifically part of construction works, the efficient running of the traffic lights, the traffic signals and in effect the traffic queuing um, on Cheltenham Parade will be crucial to make this work. Now, I think when when Carl was referring to the, the 53 seconds uh, negative impact on traffic, in a sense, I think we're talking about queuing down that stretch. Um, so if I'm if I'm right, can I just check that a review of the signals, the timing, the flow further down Cheltenham Parade would form part of the detailed design and, and implementation of this scheme? Thank you, Michael. Barry, would you like to come back on that? Yes, thank you, Chair. And, and, and yes, in response to Councillor Harrison's question, yes, we would be looking looking at reviewing um, and improving all of the traffic signal timings um, and facilities as part of the TCF project. So, so, so thank you, Barry, because Carl, I, th I think this is this is crucial because, you know, if you look at that stretch, because so much of this is, is about, in effect, losing a, a hundred yards or so of, of double lane traffic from the um, station parade corner um, onwards on station parade. And I mean, you know, it's it's single lane from from the A1, from Ripon, from Jennyfield Drive, you know, all the way down into town to the to the rear of the Harrogate Theatre. So that's the extent of constricting the traffic to achieve the results that we're wanting to achieve. So I, I think when you boil it down, do we trust that modelling? Do we trust that the the negative impact the worst case scenario is those 53 seconds and if we do then then in my view you know the scheme can be supported on that basis alone never mind the the any of the other potential positives coming out of it so um th that i think is the challenge in front of us and i'm happy to support the scheme proceeding okay thank you michael andrew you're next thank you leader um well, I mean, I spent uh, quite a lot of time when I was in uh, the BES directorate working alongside Councillor McKenzie and the officers on the uh, the development of the these transforming cities bids. And I, I know the amount of effort uh, that has gone in to uh, the preparation and submission of plans. And uh, I think it's excellent that uh, we have such a substantial level of investment um, being proposed to be um, put into North Yorkshire across these three uh, sites. So I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the Selby area, so I speak for, from the perspective of a Selby member that uh, the, the scheme that is proposed there has broad support, certainly uh, from the district council and also from uh, members of the public. So I certainly welcome that investment uh, in Selby. But across the other two locations as well, well, I realise that Harrogate is the, the most common controversial here uh, for, uh, as it seems on paper from the objectors but you know we've had a consultation I'm confident with the uh, the officers in terms of the implementation of the scheme and the mitigation measures and the traffic control measures that they'll put in place but you know as, as people have said you know there's there's house building in Harrogate it's going to continue um, but you know if we do nothing we'll get nothing you know this money's on the table and my view is we invest it now. Should there be any problems in the future, we'll have to look again and address those problems. Um, you know, we had a consultation on a relief road. The people, you know, who responded overwhelmingly didn't want the relief road. You know, my personal opinion 
opinion was perhaps you know we should have we we should have had it, but you know it's local democracy, as my colleagues have said. You know, consulting with locally elected members through the area constituency committee and through members of the public in terms of consultation responses. So. consultation responses. So I would urge all members, that we, we talk about democracy, I'd urge all members of the public and any interested parties to, you know, make sure they do uh, monitor what's going on uh, in their local areas and engage in consultations so that we as elected members taking decisions can get the full picture. I think we, you know, we've done that here, we've, we've consulted and I'm happy to support and second the recommendation. Thank you, Leader. Okay, thank you, Andrew. Can I bring in a local member who is not on the executive, uh, Councillor Haslam? Paul, please. Thank you very much, Carl. Um, as a councillor, both on uh, the County Council and on HBC Council, I must make clear that I fully support this uh, this scheme. Uh, I do thank all the uh, what I'll call letter writers for all their attention to detail and that will make the plan a better plan. So thank you for that. The one thing I think we can all agree on is that we want Harrogate to be a thriving town and this is an opportunity for that. As uh, Councillor White mentioned, the status quo is no longer acceptable. Business and in particular retail is changing and in 2012 I had the opportunity to review uh, a paper on the state of retail uh, in 2020. We are now in 2022. That, that paper stated that there would only be 125 shopping main shopping centres across the whole of the UK. And half of the non-food shops would be closed by this date. I think many of us can see that half of the non-food shops have closed, if not more. With Leeds and York being on our doorstep, Harrogate is not one of the 125 uh, main centres. So it's going to become incumbent on our independent traders, our hospitality, uh, to make a substantial uh, effort here. Uh, and Harrogate must evolve to be part of that future. And as a councillor, we try and set the conditions for businesses to thrive. And we see this as one of those steps. The local economy will become more dependent on the visitor economy. And this is where we have a hidden gem in terms of the conference centre. A world-class conference centre attracts many people to the town, which our conference centre does. The convention centre uh, need to thrive needs a fantastic hospitality centre. In actual fact, we could argue that we have not got enough four-star hotels right now, but uh, that might be a mute point. However, one of the, the second most important part of any successful conference centre or convention centre is transport. We now have, thanks to the Chamber of Trade, five trains a day coming from London and going back to London. We have, thanks to the LEP, two trains a day going between York and Harrogate. We have four trains a day going between Leeds and Harrogate. So that's going to make a real difference. And we also know that the many people that attend conferences come back for leisure. We have a lot of evidence on that. I'm sorry, I don't know the figure. So, uh, and I also would like to note that the town centre, the town is very good at putting on the Christmas fair. Whoever runs it, we have a very strong Christmas fair. And I don't understand why we can't put on four or even six events a year they obviously won't all be Christmas because Christmas only happens once a year. And that the, the, the area that we will be putting in front of the station parade uh, could form one of those areas for such a fair. And I would hope that the many strong traders and business owners in the town will take advantage of the conditions we are setting. As I said, this is a step uh, along our evolution to become a more thriving town in the new world. Thank you very much, Chair. OK, thank you, Paul. I don't know if Don wants to correct your frequency of the trains. Not, yes, 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 it was an hour. Yes. 
<laughs> just a very brief correction. Uh, whilst uh, Paul's comments are extremely helpful, just for the avoidance of doubt, since this is a public meeting, the two trains per day between Harrogate and York should be two trains per hour, and the four trains per day between Harrogate and Leeds should be four trains per hour in each direction. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Don. Can I open it up to anybody else now who wants to come in? Patrick, I was going to say, we, we haven't mentioned Skipton at all, uh, so you, you might want to redress that balance. Patrick, please. Thank, thank you, Leader. I, I recognise all the issues in Harrogate, and I know it's uh, difficult and it has dominated this uh, proposal, but there are two other proposals, as Andrew uh, Lee has mentioned, one for Selby and then one for Skipton. And uh, the one from Skipton is far less controversial than what we've been hearing about Harrogate. And I would just focus on a couple of areas. I think... Um, First of all, the station and plaza improvements are welcome. They had 66% positive uh, comments in the consultation. And also the uh, Black Walk, which leads into town to Gallows Bridge, which is also going to be redone, and to the bus station in the center of Skipton. It, these are very good proposals uh, because we have a very uh, good train service from Skipton. I believe it has the second most passenger journeys uh, anywhere outside of Harrogate. So uh, have great connections to Leeds and Bradford, et cetera. So um, this is most welcome. Uh, the canal path improvements are also quite welcome, 77% uh, positive comments in the consultation. And um, these are sort of pedestrian and cycling links. And I think they're very well thought through because the links from the center of Skipton uh, going up towards the Skipton Auction Mart, the Skipton Academy, and the Craven College are most welcome. I would just say it does mention in the proposals that they still haven't worked out the lighting situation along the canal path, and I hope they do uh, arrive at a good solution for that. Um, so I think these proposals are very welcome from residents of Skipton and Craven and uh, all those who come visit us. Uh, they're providing co connectivity to the center of the town, and they're doing a lot of joined up um, access to other parts of, of the town. So, um, and as as has been noted in the uh, um, sort of the positive comments, we've generally had very positive comments from the residents. So I, I would like to uh, welcome this plan. I'd like to thank the officers for all their work. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Patrick. Anybody else, please? Can I just sum up, Carl, briefly? Yes, please, please do, John. Uh, well, uh, thank you very much for all those comments, uh, and particularly thank you to uh, to Patrick and to Andrew for reminding us that uh, whilst we spent a lot of time discussing the Harriet Gateway proposal, uh, there are actually two other very significant, really good schemes for Selby and Skipton. I can assure both uh, Patrick and Andrew that I fought as hard for those uh, schemes uh, through the WICA process as I did for the Harrogate one. Uh, just a couple of comments. Uh, first to David Simister, if he's still on the line. He, he accuses us of not listening to the views of business or ignoring the views of business. Uh, that could not be further from the truth. Uh, we've all spent a great deal of time listening to what businesses have told us. Uh, I have uh, joined in several meetings with, with business people. I attended the open meeting that they organised in November. Uh, the fact that we may disagree with what business says in this case does not mean that we're not listening to them. And just briefly also to the comments made by Mr. Brown of the Harrogate Civic Society, uh, I did have a lengthy meeting with a senior representative of the Civic Society to discuss with that person the proposal from the Civic Society that we look at re restoring two-way traffic to Parliament Street and West Park, uh, and therefore freeing up Station Parade because all of the A61 southbound traffic would be taken away from it. All I would say is that I did give a full reply at that time. I do not think, as executive for access, that this, this is something that we should be spending officer time on at the moment. It is a distraction. It is completely separate from the Trans Transforming Cities Fund scheme. And I'd also ask the Civic Society to have a word with employers like Betty's, uh, the West Park Hotel, Wheaton's, and others along Parliament Street and West Park to ask them 
whether they wish to see the a doubling of traffic on the road in front of them and the removal of all the parking spaces along those roads, which inevitably would follow if we ever considered returning two way movement to the A61 Parliament Street and West Park as used to exist prior to 1970 when traffic conditions were quite different. So, um, Chairman, uh, just to sum up, uh, I thank uh, my cabinet colleagues, my executive colleagues for their comments today. I thank members of the public for, for their statements. I know that the, these are robust statements and they feel very strongly about Harrogate. But nevertheless, uh, I would like to propose the recommendations which are on page 307 of our agenda papers uh, under paragraph 13.1. And that is that we recommend to the chief executive officer under his emergency delegated decision-making powers that one, the proposals for the transforming cities fund projects in Harrogate, Skipton and Selby are taken forward through to de detailed design and a final business case is presented to the West Yorkshire Combined Authority for each project and two, approval of the detail of the final business case for submission to WICA is delegated to the Corporate Director for Business and Environmental Services in consultation with the executive member for access. Those are recommendations uh, and I understand Councillor Lee is seconding those. Yeah, thank you, Don. That, that, that's correct, isn't it, Andrew? You indicated some time ago that you were happy to second it. Yes, Leader, happy to second those yeah. proposals. Okay, thank thank you. you, Andrew. Okay, just before we move to the vote, can I just echo uh, your thanks, Don, to the speakers who've taken the, uh, the time to come and uh, consult with us. Um, it, it is valuable to uh, to hear their views, even if we don't necessarily agree with those views, but we have had a robust discussion. So can I now ask Daniel that we move to the vote? Yes, thank you, Chairman. I'll launch the vote now. So I have uh, nine responses. I think Councillor Harrison may um, have had to leave the meeting, Chairman, which no, would account no, for... Is, it, is there? Oh, no, sorry, apologies. So um, yeah, yeah. I have nine votes that have yeah, been submitted. Daniel, it's me. D Daniel, my, um, mine's going really slow, Andrew Lee. I think it's come up now, so I'll submit my vote now in favour. It has. Thank you very much, Councillor Lee. So all 10 members of the executive um, have voted and all in favour of the proposal. OK, thank you, Daniel. So can I now turn to the chief executive and ask Richard if he will use his delegated powers to confirm that decision, please, Richard? Thank you, Chairman. Yes, I can confirm that I will use the delegated powers following that debate and the um, 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 overwhelming vote uh, to confirm the recommendations set out in Section 13 of the report. Thank you, Carl. OK, thank you. Let's move on then, please, to item eight, which is appointment of external auditors. I'll come 